Jewish population of the Typhus fled north um, into Christian Spain, where they were welcomed by the Christian rulers to repopulate areas that had been devastated by war, but a number of them also moved elsewhere in the Muslim Empire. Now, it seems that the Maimonides family was hanging around in Spain for a number of years after the, um, the Almohades um, uh, uh, conquest, and that in 1159, they actually moved to Fez, which was the capital of the Almohades um, uh, empire or kingdom. Uh, if you take a look, map three uh, gives you an idea of the size of their, um, their kingdom. Now, why they did that, of course, is a difficult question, but one of the things that we definitely know, uh, this has been an argument, by the way, of scholars, but Kramer definitely um, uh, proves it, is, is that like a lot of other Jews, they, um, they converted to Islam, but practiced their Judaism secretly. Um, and they were living in Fez for a number of years, posing as Muslims. This was not unusual uh, for Jews. And in fact, his own father had written a, uh, a treatise about this, why it was permissible to do it. And one of the earliest things that Maimonides himself ever wrote was something, a letter of consolation to those Jews who had done this, uh, and what they should do, and why it was permissible, because some Jewish authorities felt that if they did this, they were, um, they were traitors to the Jewish people, and they should have died. They should have martyred themselves instead of uh, converting to Islam. But undoubtedly, hundreds of Jews did, including the Maimonides family. But eventually, they did what Maimonides himself people should do. You get the heck out. And they moved in 1165 by ship. There's a letter of his describing the ship voyage, how terrible it was. And they end up in the land of Israel, and they land in Akko, um, Acre, which was under Crusader rule at the time. Um, they stay there for a number of years. They visit Jerusalem. They visit Hebron. There's a possibility they visited other places in the region. They be, but then, um, about a year later, they go to Egypt. They land at Alexandria, and they move uh, to Fustat, Old Cairo, where Maimonides' father so dies soon after that. Um, in 1168, uh, he finishes after when he's 30 years old, something he started when he was 23, which was his commentary to the Mishnah, the entire Mishnah, which he does in Arabic. And in the process, translates the Mishnah into Arabic. Two years later, his brother David dies in a sea voyage um, on, to India. Um, and what's fascinating about this is we have a letter that Maimonides wrote eight years later describing what happened and how terrible it was on him. He's writing to a friend in Akko, a guy named by the name of <coughs> Japhet ben Eliyahu, who they had become friends with when they were in, in Akko. And he apparently had not heard from him for a long time. And Japhet wrote him and said, what's doing? You know, I thought we were friends. So he writes this letter and he says, look, I haven't heard from you. But then he talks about how when they got to Egypt, all these terrible things happened to them. First, of course, was his father. But then he refers to the death of his brother, he says, who was drowned while traveling in the, in the ocean. Many goods that belonged to me, to him, and to other people were lost with him. He left me with his widow and a little daughter. For nearly a year I received, after I received the sad news, I lay ill on my bed, struggling with fever and despair. In other words, for a whole year, Maimonides, in effect, was a state of deep depression. And he's writing this letter eight years later, and he says, I'm still mourning for my brother. One of the most fascinating things that happened was is that in the Cairo Geniza, they actually found the letter from David to Maimonides just before he went on the voyage. Mm -hmm. And he, he talks about, it's a chatty little letter, how's the family? Uh, he talks about how he was supposed to get a, be part of a caravan that was going across the Sinai Desert, and he and a friend decide they're going to go off on their own, then they discover the caravan had been attacked by thieves, and now he says, we're, I've decided we're going to go to India, and where we're going to do some trading there, it's one of the most remarkable letters ever found. And he's never heard from again. Because the Jews were heavily involved in the India trade. Um, special, and the Maimonides family, not unusual for scholars, was probably trading primarily in things like spices and jewels, because they're easy to carry. But anyway, um, what happens is, is that when Maimonides gets to Egypt, the, uh, Egypt is ruled by a Shiite dynasty called the Fatimids who were responsible for the, uh, they had broken away from the caliphate fairly early on and established Ki uh, Egypt as a separate kingdom. They uh, founded Cairo. They built the great mosque there, which is still uh, seen today, and made it a great center of learning. 
But during the time uh, that Maimonides was there, um, uh, the, uh, the Fatimids are overthrown by Saladin and create a new dynasty. And it's under that group that Maimonides becomes the head of the Jews, the, Ra the Ra'is al-Yahud, and the court physician. He becomes a court physician. Um, in 1172, he begins writing one of his famous epistles, but in 1168 is when he begins to write his Mishnah Torah, and it takes him uh, about four years to do it. Uh, his son is born in 1186, um, and... Um, uh, in 1185 to 1190, for five years, he writes the Guide for the Perplexed. He then writes some later, uh, his letter on resurrection, and he finally dies <clears throat> in uh, 1204. We know this because his grandson wrote about when his grandfather died. We have a precise date for his. And his body is taken and buried in Tiberias beside that of his father, who was also buried in Tiberias. Um, what we're going to... Um, do is we're going to stop here. Um, I'm going to just find out uh, if there's any questions. Um, <coughs> we'll talk a little bit more about some of his um, uh, some of his uh, biography as we go along. Also a little bit about what happened to his work after his death because there were a number of controversies of it. But now I'm going to open up to any final questions before we conclude. <coughs>